Seven and All. And today, I'm going to be showing you a more in-depth look inside of Preschool at Home by Kate Snow. This video has been requested and I'm going to talk a little bit about how I'm actually using this with my son throughout our days and show you um, basically what the book entails and what makes it a little bit different from what you normally think of with preschool kindergarten math. So here's the book. It's a very small book and this um, considers itself a full year preschool math curriculum, but it's maybe not what you would normally think of when you're thinking of a preschool math curriculum, which to some extent you might ask, why, why would I do a preschool math curriculum? They're preschoolers. <laughs> and I, under, I understand that as well. I mean, math is maybe not the number one priority in the very early years, but also in some sense, it is because you do want to be building number sense, the foundational of the foundations of logic that are involved with math, reasoning, and understanding the way the world works. So this is it is very very different from what you might think of as just a workbook, and it has some very important ideas, which those who to to some people they're going to be very obvious, and this is maybe what you are already doing at home. This is kind of very similar to my approach to math anyways. Like I would say to some extent, you might not need a book like this, but for those of us who enjoy checklists and enjoy kind of having an order of what things to do, uh, I think it is very helpful to to help to, to just take the mental load off of you of trying to decide what order I'm going to teach skills in. And it simply gives you an order. It gives you an order of activities. So each chapter focuses on one topic. You have chapter one, counting to five, chapter two, counting to 10, chapter three, numbers from zero to five, chapter four, numbers from six to 10. We go on to written numerals from zero to 10, comparing quantities and numbers, and it ends with addition and subtraction stories. So the very first one is a whole chapter on counting to five. Now, for many people, you'll hear of toddlers and preschoolers. You'll he hear moms talking about, oh, my toddler, my preschooler is counting to 20, is counting to 50, is counting to 100. This book really, really tries to hammer home the fact that counting is more complicated than you think it is at first. Um, counting is very complicated. If you've ever counted with a young child and you have them counting things, you might notice them going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and like they're pointing to things because they kind of know they're supposed to pound, point to things, but they kind of just count to tell some random number rather than really taking the time to associate each thing they're counting with an, each, each word they say with an individual item that they're counting. So the, it takes a while to develop that association between understanding that these words I'm saying, they need to respond to a specific number of objects, not just random. Because when kids are first learning to count, they might kind of say the order, say the numbers due to rote memory, but they're not necessarily associating those numbers with different quantities. So counting is actually a pretty complex topic. So to um, many people, and for many people, the way they do math, counting to five is not going to be very impressive at all. But these activities in here are, I would say, quite challenging for a young preschooler. Probably if you're doing this with an older preschooler, someone after four, it's not gonna be as challenging. I'm doing it with a three-year-old who's not quite three and a half, and this is good for him, and he's progressing through chapter one as we take a few days for each one, but it doesn't come instantly. It doesn't come instantly to be able to do some of these different activities. There's motor skills involved in counting with fingers to five. If you, ever, if you think about that with young kids, that's quite a specific motor skill to be able to lift up the right number of fingers. If we're talking about, okay, I wanna see two fingers, I wanna see three fingers, I wanna see five. Being able to move your fingers correctly so you're involving motor skills with that. I'm going to show you inside the chapter, but I just want to say like kind of one of the first things that really isn't addressed in a lot of early math programs, it is addressed in some of them, in more of the conceptual ones like math you see or Singapore math, you'll have a lot more of these, this concept of the 
how complicated counting is, but in others it does kind of get overlooked to some extent. Um, so this is this is the most in-depth um, I have seen in learning how to count to five. Many di it's tackling it from many different angles. There is an introduction you can read with kind of the ideas behind it. Uh, and then, so the main idea is start when your child is interested, to start when you feel that they're ready. And the idea is that each activity you do in order, but there's not a certain rule of how many days you're gonna spend on one activity. If you're doing it with an older preschooler, someone who's already four, I think you would be moving a lot faster than if you're doing it with a three-year-old. So depending on their age and just depending on how fast they go. Some of the concepts about this is that this would be very short. A very short, these are very just short little activities. Five minutes of math here and there throughout the day. And bringing it up in conversation again and again. But so this is what a chapter looks like. You have a short chapter overview. The basic principles of counting. We're just learning to count to five. So you might be doing this with a child who already knows um, how to count to 20 perhaps. Um, but this is not dealing with large quantities, with very small quantities. It would be important to note, don't always be counting a quantity of five because then kids can get used to thinking that there's always five things. Sometimes you'll be counting two, three, four, five, zero, one, whatever, um, but counting within that. So you start with counting five toys in a line. You then move on to count toys in different arrangements. So you have ki your kids count a set of toys that are arranged in line then you say, okay, now I'm gonna take these same toys, I'm gonna to put them like this, I'm gonna put them in a circle. How many are there now? How many? And your kid, if they already if they already have that understanding, they might just say, well, there's five. And they don't feel like they need to count them again. But for those who are still not getting used to, oh, or who are still not used to the idea that the same quantity can look different and can be arranged in different ways, they're gonna take the time to count them again. So that's a pretty, to me, that's a pretty advanced mental concept that can take a while to, um, to rest in, to practice with, to wrestle with. Now, then you move on to um, counting with fingers. That's your next activity after you spend a little time resting in that, playing with that activity again and again, counting different objects and then taking that exact same set of objects. Okay, I've got three pencils here. What if I put them in this shape, shaped like a triangle? What if I line them up? How many are there? Working on being able to look at that. Notice that the quantity doesn't necessarily change when you have some objects um, that are in a different arrangement. We're introducing the concept of zero, um, and then here they have you counting around the house, but also asking questions about counting zero thing. How many fairies are in the bathtub? Then we have matching my mat. So you take some small objects and make an arrangement on a piece of paper, counting out how many there are, and then have your child make the same arrangement and count how many there are on their paper. So this is why I'm describing this as, this is the most in-depth I have seen, learning to count small quantities. Setting a table for a tea party, the activity is you set up a few stuffed animals, and then you have your child count them, and then, okay, how many plates will we need to set the table? for the animals. Okay, how many cups will we need? And then they need to place cups and then figure out how many cups. We're learning about correspondence, um, matching, matching the quantity of plates and the quantity of cups to the quantity of stuffed animals. We have feeding stuffed animals, a particular amount of things. Okay, this stuffed animal is hungry for three cookies or whatever it is and they need to count out three, give them the correct amount. And then we are learning about counting intangible objects, counting jumps, counting claps. That's, a, that's another complication of counting to think you can count things that you can't see. You can count things that you do or you can count things that you hear. That's, that's intense. And yep, counting claps after the counting, matching claps to counters. Then we count claps and then we t there's an assessment of if your child is ready to move on to chapter two, counting to 10. And again, it's going to be very similar activities. There's some different ones. It's not gonna be a total repeat, but it's going to be 
very, very in-depth activities. You just take a few minutes each day to work on math throughout the day. Maybe we'll do the math, a math activity in the morning. Maybe we'll do it um, in the afternoon again. So we are still in the first chapter and this is just little things that I'm weaving in through my day and I have no intention of trying to rush through it but trying to truly master what counting means. Then as we get further on, we're gonna be getting into more advanced things, thinking of quantities as groups rather than always counting them one by one. That is a very important concept as kids progress into early math skills. Uh -huh. Hiding toys, recognizing quantities without counting. That's something that we do very naturally at this point, but it's, it's a skill that has to be practiced. Fingers up and fingers down, at combinations that make five. So, this is what preschool at home is like. I find it, in some ways, very, very in-depth for, um, for what you would think of for preschool math. Very intense on the number sense, something that you really can just take a small book and take it and just kind of run not run with it, walk slowly with it through the preschool stage and just enjoy building a sense of number sense with your kids, um, with your young children as they grow. And I think if you go through this and you take your time with it, I think your child will be very, very well set up for success for kindergarten and first grade math and beyond um, due to taking that time to deeply understand counting rather than just rote memory and deeply understand um, connections between quantities and all of that. So that is the resource I wanted to share with you.